Hi everyone, it's Sam from SiteMate. In this video, we're going to take a look at the form register view uh, inside Dash Pivot. Uh, once your team starts to use your form templates uh, quite a lot and you've got a lot of data being captured, um, the register view really becomes the best way to filter and find uh, information down the track. So here we are in Dash Pivot and you can see that we're looking at this uh, site diary template that has uh, quite a number of records in here spanning several weeks. Um, now, this is one way to view the information in our timeline view, um, but obviously each of these forms contains quite a lot of data. And going in and opening each form, coming back out, looking in the next one, coming back out, looking in the next one is rather inefficient. Um, so we have uh, what's called the register view option. So if you click on register, and I should say it's available for both timeline and workflow style templates. Um, once we click on the register, what we see here is we've got a row for each of the forms. So similar to what we saw before, but now we have columns for uh, the different fields that are on the forms. Um, so uh, what we see here is we've got uh, created by and form version, which is actually metadata behind the form. So that's automatically uh, generated. But then everything from here onwards, so from shift date onwards, these are the fields that were customized on this template. And you can see all of the content that has been filled out within this form uh, displayed here. And as we scroll across, we're just looking at every single field uh, on the template. These, uh, these columns can actually be adjusted. So if we click this edit columns button, uh, we can turn certain columns on and off. We can rearrange them. Um, and so as an example, maybe we're not really that interested in the form version. Uh, so we could uncheck that and maybe we, we want to change the order of weather and location. So we can just click and drag that one, change the order and then scroll down, click save. And then it will refresh the register view with those changes. So now we see that the form version column is actually gone and the weather and location fields are actually uh, switched around. So we can change that back if we want, uh, just by clicking edit columns at any time. But what's really useful about the register view is that uh, for certain fields, uh, we can apply some filters. So we may want to filter by who created the form or the date that the form was on. We could actually specify a date range if we wanted to look at something from a specific month from like a year ago, uh, it'd be very easy to just uh, populate the different dates and apply filter. Uh, in this case, I'll show you an example of filtering by uh, one of these uh, list fields where we have the weather and maybe we want to filter by rain uh, and click apply filter. And you can see that uh, now we only get one result you can apply more than one filter at once. Uh, so we could filter by location and also by person. If we want to remove the filter, we just click this button here and it refreshes the register view for us. And from here, we could go ahead and filter for something else. So we might want to filter by a specific person. Let's say uh, by Daniel apply that filter and now we're only going to see the records that were created by Daniel. And let's say as an example that we wanted to now export this information. So in the register view, there's actually a selection box next to each form or each row in our register. And the export options appear in the top. We could export this uh, or these three forms as a CSV, or we can download it as one of the uh, PDF options. Um, in this case, we're just going to download the register only. So we just get the cover page with just the register, similar to what we see on the website. Uh, but feel free to tr check out the other options. Let's download the register. It takes us to a new tab. It has to uh, process that and then makes it available for download. We just click the download button. And then we can open that up and we can see that we've got those three uh, entries that we selected. It's got all those same columns uh, and it will show us as many columns as it can fit onto an A3 page. And it's got our branding and uh, information about what project and team we're on and the versioning and all that type of thing uh, in the header and footer as well. So it comes out looking very uh, nice and professional.
One last note uh, before we wrap up is that if you do make some changes to your template, so let's say that we went ahead and edited uh, this template, made some changes um, and removed some fields or added some new fields. Um, those fields, uh, if, if we added in a new field, um, any of the existing forms in here will not have that field added to them. And so in the register, if we have a column for that new field, it's just going to show up blank. And when we go to edit the columns, uh, it will actually show up at the bottom of the list. Uh, so just keep that in mind if you're uh, searching for the new field. Um, so that concludes this video. I hope it's been helpful. Um, if you get stuck, as always, feel free to send our team a message via the live chat. We do have some other help articles available online if you want to do some additional reading and learn about the other parts of Dash Pivot. I hope this has been useful and thanks for watching.